Hello everyone, my name is Joanna Daniel. Usually I'm here on a Tuesday around this time having trauma recovery conversations. Sometimes I'm with someone and we're having a, a talk together, but today again I'm on my own. I wanted to carry on the conversation around how to widen your window of tolerance and have more coping mechanism, more, more coping strategies, more ways of dealing with overwhelm. We know that when we experience childhood trauma, that one of the fallouts of that is an inability to be able to manage our own emotions. And so we, at Once the Scars, we want to teach you how to experience it, manage it, um, use the right coping skills, the right coping mechanisms so that you can be able to be in control of your emotions and then they're not controlling you. So I'll, first, I'm going to talk about what happens when we're triggered. Um, and somebody asked what, what are triggers? And I think I'm going to answer it here today. Last time somebody asked, what are my triggers and how do I know when I'm triggered? So I want to talk about that. And, um, then I am going to talk about, uh, some of the things that got us, what, what's happening when we are, when we are triggered and some of the spaces that we can we can go into to be able to to be able to um to manage so i'm just looking for for one here that i feel kind of happy about reading what what triggers are so triggers are uh a trigger is a reminder of post-trauma or triggers are a reminder of event it's a, a reminder that can cause a person to feel overwhelmed you can feel sad and anxious and different kinds of emotional states so it's a reminder of an event is a trigger um, thank you for joining, Queen. Uh, a reminder of an emotional event. So when we're triggered, we can go into what we call hyper arousal, and that's when we are, we, uh, when we are, put us in our fight, which re which results rather from a fight or fight or flight response, fight or flight response. And so when we're in that place, it feels like anger, irritability, anxiousness. Um, sometimes crying, feeling of being scared. Um, we there is this feeling of uh, emotions that are feeling activated. We call it so anger, irritability, frustration. Any one of those kind of feelings we feel when we're in our fight or flight response. When we're in our when we're being when we're hyper when we're in hyper arousal, right? So behavior that looks like you might um, self-destruct. It might look like that in some people. You know, some people get really blind and mad, fury, th those kind of behaviors is common when we're in that place, right? So sometimes pe people who experience trauma or people who are triggered are in that place and they don't understand what's happening. And so sometimes you might get labeled as angry or irritable all the time, or, you know, all you're always in panic, you're always anxious this, because there's this constant state of anxiety and there's some people who live in this state and, and experience it more than they experience states of calm and peace and don't understand why, don't understand what the triggers are and, and what are the things that you can do to help yourself to come out of that state, right? And to come back to a place of peace. And, and so over the next couple of weeks, I'll you know, teach what, how, how to get back to your place of peace and help you understand what that looks like for you so you can know when to come back, okay? And then there is hypo. So there was hyper, not hypo arousal, which is more like the freeze response where, so you're, the, and it's the same thing. Something happens and you're, sh you're shut, you shut down, you're numb, feelings, feelings of depression and disconnection. This person, when you're in this place, we feel invisible, feel like we're not there. We feel disconnected from people. You're in the room, but you're not in the room. You are not connected to anybody or you're not able to feel. And so sometimes um, something might happen that we feel might be damaging. Sometimes people tell their story with absolutely no emotion because they live in this state of freeze response where everything is shut down and they're not allowing themselves to feel because feeling is too uncomfortable. Um, sometimes in certain settings, uh, the, the person who is in the freeze response might look like they're coping better than the person who is in fight or flight. Because the, the shutting down and the numbing is so much harder to identify than the person who is irritable and angry um, and, and anxious, right? So they might look like they're not coping well, but everybody's nobody's coping in these situations. Everybody in that has a narrow window, right? And we want to be able to practice um, 
coping mechanism that is going to help you to widen your window. Um, and so, so the window, the, the wider the window, the less likely you are to experience those extreme states, right? The hyper and the hypoarousal. So the wider the window, the less likely you are to experience extreme states of anxiousness or, or, or numbing and disconnection. Because you'll be able to understand what's happening and you'll be able to apply the right tools to what's happening so that you can feel better, so that you can get back to a place of peace and out of those states and widen your window, okay? So here is one of the reasons why I do groups, why I do retreats, why I do the things that I do at Wounds the Scars. And our next online retreat is June 3 to 6. I think that's coming up shortly. Because it provides a space for people who don't understand their triggers, don't understand their trauma responses, to be able to understand their triggers, understand their trauma responses, talk to other people or hear other people and how they deal with their triggers and trauma responses and see how it is applied, hear how other people apply it, apply it together in the group as a collective so that we can, and this is what I call healing together. Now, this is, this is particularly, this is particularly effective when you've never seen it modeled in your family setting, when you've never seen it modeled in your community, when you've never seen it modeled anywhere, it's particularly effective how, because if you've never seen something modeled, if all you've known is shut down and numb, when anything happens, that's what you're going to do. You're going to develop that response, right? How likely that you're going to develop that response. If you live in, a, in a, an environment where there's high, high conflict, there's anger and irritability and shouting and um, lack of inability to manage emotions, you might develop those ways of coping too. And so when anything happens, that's what you go for. That's become your response because you don't know how to do anything else. And that's why groups are so effective because what it does is teach us how to learn, how to see somebody else modeling something else, right? And be able to copy them, to model what they're doing and to learn something that's different, right? So these healing spaces help to expand your ability to cope. It's a place where crying can happen and you can be held. So I have one rule in my retreats and in my groups that I do. If anybody's crying, we're going to let them cry. We're just going to let them cry. We're not going to offer tissue. We're not going to say it's okay. We're not going to rub their back or do any touching. We're going to just let people do what is happening and be in the moment. Then what I do is check the room. I check the room to see how everybody else is. I let everybody check in with their emotions. If we're in the same room together, I can I can feel when other people are going off. I can feel when the room is shifting and it's not just one person. And, and I know what to do to bring the room back so that everybody can be okay again. So that's one of the things I know how to do well. After so many years of doing groups, I can feel when the room is shifting because one person perhaps has become destabilized and one person is in a place of being triggered and is dealing with that. I can feel the shift and I can know what to do to pull it back in so that we can all come together and support this one person who needs it. Or if the room becomes too shift, has shifted so far and it's become destabilized and everybody now or most people in the room are triggered in some way or the other. I know how to calm the room down, get us back to a place of peace get everybody back into the frontal lobe out of the emotional brain and we can carry on the work of healing that we're doing. But even as we do that, that is such a healing, beautiful thing to do, to happen for the person who was triggered, well, triggered on the surface that we could see first because perhaps other people were on the surface and we hadn't, I hadn't yet picked that up in the room and we are, no, they hadn't said and we hadn't yet picked that up in the room. So that's why healing spaces are so beautiful because it's a, it allows us to be able to understand, to be with each other, to support each other, and to hold each other. When I say hold each other, I mean hold each other emotionally while healing is taking place. So healing gives a greater ability to manage emotions because you know, um, you can understand what emotions are. You can learn some tools some, that are safe to manage them. You can see other people managing theirs and you can hear how other people manage theirs. And that's the beautiful thing about it. So having those models really help you if you're listening and you're watching this replay and you don't, whichever platform you're watching on and you're struggling and you don't have a community, you don't have a group. Our retreat is June three to six. 
and it's online so you can view from wherever you are and we're going to have a lot of trauma stabilization stuff going on in that retreat we're going to teach a lot of stuff there a lot of coping mechanisms we're going to have pilates um foods that heal and other relaxation techniques music for healing and i'm going to be doing all the workshops to help manage thoughts manage emotions and rewrite okay so i'll be doing that and also we have groups um that meets on a monday evening and a tuesday evening for tuesday evening are women who are healing from domestic abuse and on a monday is women who are healing from sexual abuse now the group on a monday for women who are healing from sexual abuse is already closed but we're looking to start another one towards the end of june if you're interested send me a message or inbox me and i can send you the details but i believe when we have safe healing spaces we can learn how to heal we can heal together we can widen our window together and we can learn amazing ways of coping together so we can heal and grow together all right thank you so much for joining i'm hoping i'm gonna be here again um next week tuesday around about the same time when perhaps i'll be interviewing um talking with someone um on that perhaps i'll get somebody to to tell us how they manage their emotions what what are the things that they have learned in in order to widen their window so you can hear it from somebody else about how they're applying the techniques and how they're doing it if you have any questions, just put it in the chat or send me a message. Have a great evening. Take care.